Good evening and welcome to our special CMI Women series where we're discussing the five themes of our Better Managers Manual, uh, which is still available to download for free. This week we are discussing mental health and well-being. Uh, we'll be taking questions from the CMI Women's members uh, throughout this whole event on our Facebook group and so please do ask questions, comment, like and uh, use the reactions as much as possible and simultaneously uh, we'll be streaming through LinkedIn Live this evening. So again, please do share your comments and questions and say hello to show you're uh, watching and listening and give us a big thumbs up if you can. Um, to introduce my guest this week, I'm very pleased that CMI Chartered Fellow, Dr. Jamia Koya, is Senior Lecturer, Organization Behavior and Human Resource Management and Chair of the Women's Network and Athena Swan Lead at University of East London. And Dr. Koya is also CMI Women Board Member. So good evening, Jamie. Good evening, Matt. Thanks for joining us this evening. And Thank you. Uh, to start off, we're going to highlight some recent research on workplace happiness conducted by CMI with our practicing managers between the 23rd of April and 6th of May 2020. Um, so this research worked by giving a score across 100 for six steps. Uh, that were created by engaging works and a score closer to 100 is a more positive score and a score closer to zero a more negative score so we compared the data um, between the january pilot of our engaging work survey with cmi managers and uh, the data that we collected in april 2020 where comparison was possible and in essence uh, we get an idea of managers workplace happiness before the crisis and during the early stages of its impacts so one of the headlines there is that workplace happiness uh, seems to have increased since January 2020 across all managers, uh, whether at home or at the office. The overall happiness scored 72. So Jamie, does that surprise you at all? It doesn't surprise me at all. Um, human beings are known to actually bounce back quickly. And um, when we're faced with challenges or difficult situations, we're known to dig deep into our reserves and, and find strength and resilience. And this is likely to be what's happening. So uh, most of us uh, would have displayed resilience in the past of, you know, faced difficult situation where we've actually displayed resilience. So when we're faced with another round of, you know, difficult situation, we find that resolve to stay um, afloat and, you know, bounce back and deal with the situation. So what people have, you know, um, um, Kind of you know responding to by you know showing more um happiness is by actually responding to to this you know challenging situation that they found themselves uh, by being you know resilient and bouncing back absolutely and the highest scoring of the two engaging work six steps were actually for empowerment and instilling pride both mm -hmm. scored 74 but the lowest scoring uh steps um, was well-being at 68. And um, what, what do you make of that, Jamie? Well, what I make for, of, of that is that this is a reminder for us as, you know, leaders and managers and, you know, individuals to actually prioritise well-being um, and the fact that many of us are having to kind of respond and, you know, manage and juggle um, multiple commitments and, you know, deal with a situation and maybe even have other additional responsibilities. So therefore, um, well-being is almost kind of, you know, drop off on the way. So this is a time to actually pick it up and make it a priority. As managers, um, I think it's a time to actually um, intentionally build resilience in our team and encourage um, our people to, you know, to pay attention to their well-being. Absolutely. And obviously, that's uh, the purpose of this evening. And I know you'll be picking up on some more of our findings as we go through the evening. And again, the, the audience can post comments and questions about those as we as we go on. Um, but it is also worth mentioning that we did have a look at any gender differences and there were few. Um, but an interesting thing to consider here is that for all managers working at home, um, the overall score for feeling networked to the colleagues was 52. And that score was statistically significantly higher for men working from home at 56 uh, than women working from home at 49. So perhaps meaning that women may feel more isolated uh, than their male peers. Does that 
Does that sound right to you? Um, I think, you know, is, is what mentioned at this at this stage that the um, relationship, strong relationship is one of the pillars for resilience. And um, women need to pay attention more um, to that as one of the pillars that actually help to bolster um, resilience. Uh, women have more responsibility in terms of maybe caring at home, you know, homeschooling, you know, juggling, you know, work at the same time. And I'm not saying for a minute that men don't have the same, you know, responsibility, maybe not at equal measure, or maybe even women, you know, the support network that they have, they've lost some of it as a result of, you know, the current situation. But definitely that significance in terms of difference should be addressed and it could be um, a way of actually wake up call for women to actually say make use of your support network reach out to people who can help you and support you because indeed people who are resilient are people who actually put their hand up and ask for help when needed absolutely and i think we've seen some interesting ons data published today as well which certainly i think uh calls out a couple of the points you made there about uh, the reduction in perhaps uh, the care opportunities by people's parents for their, for their children um, oh. as they're at a distance. And, and there has been, you know, according to this data, some, some changes with men taking up more care and responsibilities, but it is still, according to the ONS, less than women. So, you know, I, I think this is really interesting and we're going to talk tonight about um, well-being and positive psychology. So we did actually already have a a pre-submitted question asking about, you know, what is well-being and positive psychology. Um, but I think that actually leads us neatly into our discussion where you'll explain some of the key principles behind this. So to start us off, Jeremy, are there different techniques managers should be using to build resilience in their teams? Um, you know, perhaps those who are working from home, those who are returning to the workplace under the government guidelines, and those who are perhaps in slightly more uncertain situations facing maybe restructured roles or other issues. So how, how might people cope with that? I think um, the way to cope with this, uh, especially um, for leaders, is to do a baseline assessment of you know, the three groups that you've mentioned to see where there are, uh, you know, what challenges each of these groups are facing and where there are overlaps in terms of the challenges facing the, the three groups. Um, how can they build protocols or identify frameworks that would work for all three groups, or even maybe finding specific um, um, support, um, maybe framework that would work for a um, specific group. For example, the, the image that we have on the screen, this is the workplace resilience and well-being um, framework. So this framework has five pillars, and these, this framework is actually linked to research from positive psychology that is identifying the pillars that actually support our well-being, and those are five and having the energy pillar where you're renewing your energy in terms of physical and emotional energy and the future focus pillar, the inner drive, flexible thinking, as well as strong, strong relationship. The five pillars contribute to our well-being. So managers need to think of which of these pillars would be useful for different groups. Certainly for, for those groups that will be working from home, again, based on what you told me from you know the research that is just coming out from engaging works, strong relationship would be highly recommended for those working from home so that they don't feel isolated from the rest of their team. But also those that will be coming back to restructured role or with you know potentially um, redundancy, maybe to think of you know flexible way to um, accommodate them. What can we do in terms of you know planning their roles, better having open and authentic conversation with them and helping them kind of maybe settle back into work and providing support that would you know, promote their well-being. So to answer your question, yes, uh, managers need to identify shared protocols that they can use with the three groups. A framework like this will be useful where they share the knowledge of workplace resilience and well-being pillars with their people and their team. And, and also, you know, sharing this would give people um, confidence and also um, accountability so that they can be proactive in terms of taking care of their well-being. Absolutely, and I know we're going. You'll be giving some practical tips later in the uh, in this discussion. But we did also have a pre-submitted question asking, you know, where and who uh, can we turn to if things are not in place adequately for our health and safety at work? And obviously, we would suggest that the first action should be to speak with your manager 
and you know perhaps their manager if you don't get an appropriate response um, because we're saying that it's the job of every good manager especially right now to ensure their teams are content and feel as safe as possible in these uncertain times so Jummy, how can people manage with a human face in such a emotionally charged situation, let's say? To answer that question, um, I'd like to start by saying managers need to care for themselves first in order to be able to care for their people and care for you know, the, the, the team that they lead or manage. Um, and in order to self-care, they need to pay attention to their mood. We all know that our mood play a key role in our mental health and our well-being, our resilience in terms of our feelings, our thoughts, our actions. So how can we promote more of positive mood for our managers? Now, the, the, the image on the screen is the mood map. Now, we want to make sure that our managers are keeping more to the right-hand side of the mood map, which is the green and the yellow zone. The green zone is where high performance happens, and the yellow zone is where relaxation now, in order for them to be in either of these two quadrant, um, they need to have a safe level or a healthy level of dopamine and serotonin, whereby you know they're feeling happy, they're feeling you know more supportive. To to have those you know adequate level of these two chemicals, um, we we need to encourage them to kind of you know take exercise, meditate more, get adequate sleep, which makes them feel rested. If they are in that zone, they're then able to you know, provide the necessary support to their team. They're able to lead with empathy and you know, compassion. Um, and also to, to keep in mind emotional contagion. So the manager can come in with a positive mood, which the team members can also catch. So if you as a leader, you're you know, you know, positive, you're you know, um, upbeat, your team will almost certainly, you know, you know, catch that as well. So, but it starts with self-care. And once you're caring for yourself, you're then, you know, able, you know, to lead with a human face by being empathetic and, you know, compassionate to your team members. That's really interesting. So, you know, for example, uh, you know, practically should, you know, do you think it's worth kind of almost looking at this mood map at the end of each working day and as a manager thinking, where am I on this right now? And that's an interesting um, um, question. Each of us are likely to spend some percentage of our day in each of these quadrants. But what we want to do is to make sure that we're not spending too much time on the left-hand side. If we take on more than we can chew, we might find ourselves in the red zone where you know, we're tired and wired. But we're not of you know, any good use to anyone. So again, it's about being intentional and checking are there tasks or activities that actually gets me, you know, really drained? What can I do to lessen the effect of such activities? Mm -hmm. And on that on that point of draining, uh, perhaps, you know, I think one of the things in the Better Manager's Manual is the fact that, you know, this is a crisis and we acknowledge it's a crisis. Um, so, you know, realistically, is it possible to embrace joy during this crisis? It definitely is, is possible. Um, it sh we should pursue experiencing joy at this point in time. Joy is one of the positive emotions um, which should be embraced. Um, and positive emotion, experiencing more positive emotions gives us um, the capacity, mental capacity to handle um, whatever challenging situation that we're being faced with. When we are experiencing more of positive emotions, um, we were in a solution-focused um, mind frame as opposed to problem-focused mind frame. So managers can be intentional in terms of experiencing joy. And in order to do that, uh, it's by, you know, paying attention to, you know, the ordinary things and, you know, seeing the vibe, extra vibrancy in things and, you know, going for long walks and, you know, getting out in nature looking out of your window, moving more, you know, doing things that actually bring you, brings, brings you joy. Um, and one of the ways to actually start to, you know, notice when you're in a joyful, you know, uh, moment is to, you know, record gratitude. You know, what are you grateful for? What's going well as a group, you know, as a team? What are we doing well? What are we learning in this period? How can we, you know, 
keep growing and learning from you know what we're doing and what we're doing differently so it's by you know recording the, the good things and things that are going well but also journaling you know keeping a journal of you know how things are going for you as a group or as individuals absolutely and on, on that note i think you're going to run through uh you know some of your top tips for building resilience in teams and for you know managers to build resilience in themselves so yeah. that would be fantastic So in putting together the, these five tips, um, I actually um, had to streamline them to five. Um, and these five tips are actually informed by research and recommendation from you know, several literature um, in positive psychology. The first one is to manage yourself physically and emotionally and um, to make sure that you're fueling your body well, you're moving more, you're getting adequate sleep, um, but also limiting your exposure to blue screen and um, you know screen generated um, light which can actually um, have negative impact on our physical emotional and cognitive health so you know exercise and moving even if you know all you have or all you're able to do is just moving around your house from your living room to your kitchen make sure that you know you're incorporating opportunities you know for regular breaks and um, which has been you know identified as you know helping us in terms of learning and you know, improving our memory. So not sitting still for you know, long periods of time without you know, getting up. So that'll be my number one tip. Tip number two is to focus on what you can control or influence and let go of what you can't. So whenever you're facing any challenging situation, and it's, it's almost you know, ongoing now, and to think about can I control this? If it's something you cannot control, can you assert some kind of you know, influence over the situation? If you can influence it, then definitely go ahead and you know, you know, influence the situation and you know, get the outcome that you desire. But if it's not possible, then you know, ignore the situation and let go of it or maybe ask for help, but not to channel your energy too much onto something that you have absolute no control over. Tip number three, this is, you know, encouraging assessment and, you know, recognition of situation. So you assess what's going on and recognize people who are contributing, you know, good work to what's going on within the team. And when you recognize people or, you know, give them some kind of commendation, it gives them that feeling of, you know, fulfillment and pride in the work they do. And sometimes it might even require you taking action as a result of an assessment of the situation as it develops. So if you need to make some changes, take the action that is required because not taking any action can actually cause you stress. So to avoid that and to you know, build your resilience, do an honest assessment, recognize where you need to make changes and acknowledge people who are you know, already doing what they need to do and take the necessary action. Tip number four is to be open and authentic. Now, this is about, you know, identifying what are the things that are predictable that you can be proactive about and those things that are unpredictable that you need to react to, but having honest and authentic, you know, conversation with your team members and thinking of what can you do realistically in terms of, you know, setting goals and, and you know, weekly planning um, ahead in terms of, you know, responding to things as they develop, but also reacting to things, you know, in, in this present moment, you might find that there are more of unpredictable things that you're having to react to, then don't let that swamp the boat. Recognize it, but don't spend too much time on, you know, being in the reactive mode. And finally, socialize and deepen your connections with others. Now, this is pillar number five in the framework that I shared at the beginning. Now, it is recognized that when we actually nurture our networks and have support networks, it helps us to actually reach out to people and find ways to, to engage and dialogue. When you need help, reach out to people that you know can help you with specific challenges, but deepen those connections by you know, having social conversation. It doesn't all have to be walk, 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 but you know, to you know, have morning coffee virtually and um, with you know, colleagues or, you know, 
just find ways to kind of nurture your relationship with people so that you can go back and withdraw from you know the connection unless you deposit into something you cannot withdraw from it so nurture it develop it and that network will, will serve you well those would be my five top tips Great, thanks so so much. And I mean, obviously, you know, CMI Women as a network. Uh, one of the reasons we do these kind of events is to try and spark conversations uh, on the Facebook group. And I know there's been some really good conversations this week. And I've seen uh, a request for some support, and that was answered. So, um, you know, I think that's that's a really interesting point, especially tip five. We did get a comment uh, through LinkedIn saying, um, "I think managers need to key into." the people aspect of emotional intelligence and empathize more. Um, so, you know, what are some practical ways uh, someone could go about empathizing uh, more? I, I think one of the ways that managers can go about doing that is um, spending time to find out or build a rapport with the team members, because it's only when you, you know, take time to know someone well and know what's going on for them that you are able to understand ways that you can support them and understand ways that you can maybe offer them help. So um, taking time to build relationship with people helps to give you know, good grounding and understanding and then be able to you know, provide that support. But also, as, as I mentioned in, in, um, in my presentation earlier on about um, when they, the, the manager themselves, when they, you know, when you've taken care of yourself, you, you know, done the self care, you're able to then, you know, provide support. So yes, managers, and um, if they're not feeling, you know, overwhelmed themselves, they're able to, you know, be emotionally aware and provide support um, for their team members. Fantastic, and we've had a, another comment on our Facebook group, CMI Women Facebook group saying uh, we need to let go of what we don't have control over. Uh, how, how true do you think that statement is, Jamie? It is very true because that's an example of something that can easily frustrate us. So you look at the situation and do a quick assessment. You know, it's only just three, you know, can I control this if I can't? Can I bring some kind of influence to it? Influence the, the, the situation such that I can get the outcome that I desire and if not, you need to simply ignore it. And it's, you know, coming to that realization of what I need to ignore um, is very important rather than, you know, flogging a dead horse. Absolutely. And we've um, got some agreement on that, uh, especially on our LinkedIn feed. There's lots of agreement there. Um, someone says, I agree, definitely helps. I think this is talking about emotional intelligence and empathy. I agree, yeah. definitely helps develop relationships with colleagues yeah. as well as stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting aspect that we've not... Um, quite covered yet, I don't think, in terms of we've talked about managing teams, but actually um, thinking more broadly to other stakeholders. So should we be using some of these techniques with uh, customers and clients and our wider stakeholder base? I think we should, um, especially with, with customers um, and our clients as well. It's about, you know, recognizing, um, build a relationship with them as well. We, we need to build a relationship with them because when we build a relationship, we understand what they are offering or what, what they, requ they require from us as a provider, whatever it is we're providing, whether it's a product or a service. So we can use strong relationship as a way of you know, maintaining good connection with our customers, but also um, you know, flexible thinking, you know, thinking about how can we be motivated to think ahead and you know, um, think about what the customers will need and what are the ways that we can exceed the expectation of the customer before they even, you know, you know, make it um, clear or you know, ask for it. Yeah, really interesting. And you know, last week we talked about managing risk to reputation and understanding uh, stakeholders and really listening to stakeholders. And I think that that speaks volumes to uh, your point there. I think that, you know we, we are running out of time, but please, those who are watching live, do continue to put your questions and comments in. We are looking at those and we're feeding them in uh, to Jummy. Um, there, there, there have been a couple of comments a little bit early on uh, in the conversation, you know, talking about um, perhaps picking up on this point that women may have more responsibilities at home. Um, 
if you're in or sorry if you're supporting someone who you perhaps feel is moving into that red zone that we talked about earlier on the mood map what 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 kind of conversations would you be having with that person to try and help them and take some of that burden off perhaps i think one of the first thing i want to know is um have an understanding of what are their commitments because you need to know what that person is committed to so beyond just work what else do they have in terms of what they're committed to. So if I give you an example of myself, I've got two teenage children in the house at the moment. So I'm having to support them in terms of their you know, school work that, is, that they still have on. And I've got my work. And I also have a parent that I'm caring for. So all of that you know, takes my time. And whether I recognize it or not, it would drain me of my energy. And if I still have responsibility of you know, leading a team, my frustration should not, you know, get through to my, you know, to, to my team members. So being in that red zone should be about what do I need to do to take a step back? It could be more about, you know, sleeping well, I'm watching what I'm eating to make sure that I'm, I'm energized throughout the day. Am I, you know, taking time to meditate, which would almost reset the way you're feeling, you know, calm you down. So as a manager, I would want to find out, you know, is this person sleeping well? Um, can they get some kind of, you know, help um, at home? You know, ask them where might they be able, you know, to to get or, or source for help. Yeah, they're no, really important. And I imagine there'll be conversations to be had or already being held around annual leave and taking annual yeah. leave mm -hmm. and you know, not being an ideal situation, uh, perhaps because people like to, you know, maybe go away for longer holidays and sunnier places and, um, but you know that 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 perhaps is another uh, conversation that could could be held. Um, you, can, you can you can actually go on holiday without without getting on the plane. So think about ways that you can um, enjoy yourself and relax without you know leaving the country. So I mentioned about you know there are people who find it absolutely pleasurable you know walking in the you know in the parks or you know going in in the nature. Find ways. You know, simplistic ways that you can, you know, derive, you know, pleasure and, you know, happiness. Absolutely, and we we, we are running uh, out of time, but there's a question that's come through on the CMI Women Facebook group, uh, which is quite close to my heart. So, Jamie, you're aware that I uh, started at CMI a month ago, uh, and I have been onboarded and working remotely since. So, this this uh, quest, uh, question comes in. Um, how do you feel we can build relationships with new members of staff who have only just joined our department before the COVID-19 lockdown? It has been hard building rapport over Skype and the phone, exclamation mark. Uh, the get to know you chat over a coffee was brilliant before. So what would be your practical tips for you know people like me, perhaps, who have joined remotely and trying to get to know uh, their colleagues and how can managers best support that? I think one of the ways the manager can support this is maybe through a body system. Um, yes, the manager can check in with them to make sure they're getting on fine, but maybe within the team to find someone that maybe they share some similarities with. It could be age, it could be gender, it could be maybe they have children of similar age where they can, you know, find commonalities and things that they can, you know, discuss um, and, you know, pair them up to actually, you know, take the responsibility of, you know, checking on each other that is certainly true for me. Um, I'm not new at my institution, but I've been identified as someone who can support others who are new at my institution. And I enjoy the role actually, just kind of you know speaking to them, questions that they probably can't ask, you know, the dean of the school, the, you know, the managers, they can ask me because they see me as you know a body. So I would you know tell them before things are rolled out that is uh, you know from you know second month in the semester, this is going to happen. And that gives them a feeling of, you know, knowing ahead, you know, and they're not overwhelmed with, you know, and not knowing. So that might be um, one way of, you know, actually getting someone to settle into the team. Um, but certainly the manager could do more around, you know, checking in with them and making sure required information get through to them, you know, uh, before they even ask for it. Because not knowing is probably, you know, one of the, you know, frustrating things. Absolutely, and speaks, you know, uh, back to the earlier point about uh, feeling perhaps isolated and socially isolated. Mm. 
So yeah, yeah really important. And certainly I can I can speak to my personal experience of having uh, you know someone buddy up with me and it's been extremely helpful. So mm. really, really good advice there. And you know, we, we we are at half past eight this evening and uh you know having heard all the things that are going on in your life, Jeremy, I do you know really appreciate you giving us your time this evening. But in particular, so we've had lots of comments today, lots of people uh, asking questions. And it's a really important topic. So I just wondered if you could perhaps suggest some further reading or uh, materials that might be useful for people interested in exploring this topic further. There are, there are many, um, as you know, as, a, as an academic, I, it's more around books, but uh, there are many articles, especially on uh, management direct. So this is CMI um, repository. I use this quite a lot and I'm not saying this because I'm a CMI member but I find it really useful because it has you know videos, articles, especially on resilience and there's a particular one responding with resilience is a particular, uh, particularly good um, article and I would strongly recommend that and, and it talks about you know the NHS and how the kind of reason to you know the current situation so that would be um, a good read and there's a book by Barbara Fredrickson, I'm um, talking about um, happiness and positive emotion. That would be um, a good one. I've, I've provided some links to some useful reads as well. Um, so I'm happy for you to share that with our listeners. And you know, if you still have questions or comments, um, please do feel free to connect with me on, on LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy to continue with the conversation. Great, that's really helpful. And interesting you mentioned there about the NHS. So one of the comments that came through on LinkedIn uh, is from someone who's been busy at work 3D printing masks for our NHS eight weeks in. So again, you know, we talked earlier about that sense of pride that, um, you know, perhaps is yeah. one of the drivers of improving happiness. So fantastic work to Justin there. Um, so I'm just going to run through some of the um, uh, things we have coming up uh, at CMI going forward. Um, as many will know, uh, that CMI Women began 50 years ago. And this Friday also marks the 50th anniversary of the Equal Pay Act. Um, so our CEO, Anne Franca, is a leading expert on gender in the workplace, and she'll be joined by two of our charter companions, Heather Melville and Pavita Cooper, uh, this Friday lunchtime to discuss corporate social responsibility and diversity challenge of COVID-19. So certainly not one to be missed and available again on LinkedIn Live and various channels. So. Um, this time next week on CMI Women, though, we'll be joined by Charter Companion uh, Shona McPherson, who is, amongst other many senior roles, chair of the Robertson Trust. And Shona will be talking to us about the new good governance and connecting with society. Um, so that, again, please do tune in. Uh, CMI Women members will be able to tune in on uh, the Facebook group and we'll be broadcasting again on LinkedIn and taking your questions live through that uh, really interesting event. And we also have podcasts. So we talked about the opportunity to perhaps go out, stretch your legs, um, not quite meditating, but you know, still you may wish to uh, have one of the CMI podcasts uh, in your ears at the time. And so do take a look at those that, you know, on a range of topics and especially future leaders podcasts, really uh, interesting uh, podcasts that we publish every week. And um, as Jamie mentioned, there are lots of resources available. So CMI women members and CMI members, please do take a look at the, the, the article and the other articles um, mentioned by Jamie on Management Direct. And, you know, perhaps you're watching on LinkedIn and you're not yet a CMI member or a CMI women member. So I would encourage you to take a look at our website, uh, which is www.managers.org.uk forward slash CMI hyphen women. So nice and easy one to remember. Um, but thank you all for your questions and participating this evening. As Jeremy said, we'll be taking a look at those going um, after this event. And, and if there's any specific questions that you have, please do keep them coming and we'll try and answer them in, in the coming days. Um, but it just leaves me to really thank our special guests this evening. And thank you ever so much for joining us, Jeremy. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've learned a lot personally. Thank you, I've enjoyed it too. Thanks ever so much. So that's good evening. Thank you.